Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really funky and incredibly easy daisy blanket. Now it's just a one row repeat. It couldn't be simpler. It works up really, really quickly. And in the video, I will show you how to crochet the body of the blanket itself. I'll show you how to prep your piece for any border that you wish to put on. I will also cover exactly how I did this cute little scalloped border on mine. And although I don't cover how to make these flowers themselves, that is a separate video, which I have linked to. I do show you how they are attached to the blanket so that you can't see it at the back. If you want to have all the details about my specific blanket here on the table, all that information on how much yarn I used and the dimensions and the written pattern is available on my website. For your blanket itself, you're going to want some Aran weight yarn in the color of your choice with an accent color for the border, which in my case was white. You will also need a six millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, a large eye darning needle, and you're also going to want some stitch markers. Now the flowers are in a separate video, which I will link to. It's a bit too long to also add into this video on top of everything else. But for my personal flowers on my blanket, I used white and yellow Aran weight yarn. So the same weight as my blanket, but I used a slightly smaller five millimeter crochet hook for those. Whether you make your flowers before or after we're done crocheting the blanket is entirely optional, but I will show you how to attach them to your blanket at the end of this video. To begin, pop a slip knot onto your hook. Now for my blanket, I worked with foundation half double crochet stitches. So it's like a chainless start. You form the chain and the half double crochet stitch at the same time. If you want to avoid doing that entirely, you can just traditionally chain as wide as you want your project to be. And then once you have your chain stitches, you want to work into the third chain from your hook and create half double crochets all the way back along your chain. So we're going to start by chaining two. Now, as I say, this is the foundation half double crochet stitch. And we're going to yarn over and go back into that first chain that we made but we're going to try and catch two loops of that chain. So that's one loop and then also say the back bump bit. So you want to have what looks like four loops on your hook, your two yarn working loops and the two loops of the chain. Then yarn over and pull back through the chain. You have three loops on your hook, but just pull that loop a little bit taller than you usually would so that it is at the same height, but a bit looser. So I've just pulled it up so it's a little bit looser and then yarn over and pull through one loop only. Now that forms your chain. And now with three loops left on your hook, we're going to form the half double crochet. So yarn over and draw through all three loops. Now, if you want to pop a stitch marker into the top of this stitch that you've just made, now is the time to do it. So just into the top of that stitch we just made. And then again, so that is one, yarn over. And now we're going to go under the two loops of that chain you just formed. So one, two loops right at the bottom of the stitch. Then yarn over, draw through a loop, pull it up a little bit taller than these other two here. So it's nice and loose. Yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through three loops. That's your second half double crochet foundation stitch formed. Again, yarn over, go under the two loops right at the bottom to the chain that you formed, draw up a loop, pull it up a little bit looser, yarn over, pull through one, forming the chain, 
and then draw through three, forming the half double crochet stitch. Now when doing foundation stitches, you work vertically to create a horizontal piece of work. So you are forming the chains, one, two, three, and the half double crochet stitches, one, two, three, at the same time. It creates a nice stretchy fabric and a great base for this blanket. So I'm only making a small sample today. For my actual blanket, I did 125 foundation half double crochet stitches. You can, of course, make yours as wide as you like. This totally customizable, this pattern. So you want to go ahead and keep forming foundation half double crochet stitches for the width of your project. As this is just a small sample today, I've already got three. I'm only going to make 15 in total. So once you have your desired amount of foundation half double crochet stitches, or as I mentioned in the beginning, you can do a traditional chain and work your half double crochet stitches back along. We're going to work row two. So row two is the pattern repeat row. This blanket couldn't be easier. We're simply going to chain one and then turn your work. Now ignoring that chain one that you just made and working straight into the stitch where you chained from, we're going to work a half double crochet. So going under both loops of that stitch, like a half double crochet. If you wanted to add in a stitch marker, again, this would be the spot at which to do it. I'm just gonna pop the stitch marker in to mark that very first stitch. And then you're simply going to work a half double crochet in every single stitch all the way along your row. So half double crochet into each stitch. So I'm just working my very last stitch of the row into that stitch that we marked right at the start of the foundation stitches. So I can take that stitch marker out now. So at the end of row two, you should have exactly the same amount of stitches. So in my case, 15 as you made in your chainless start. So I made 15 half double crochet foundation stitches. And on for row two, I have made 15 half double crochet stitches. Now for the entirety of this blanket, all we're doing is repeating row two. Couldn't be easier, right? So we're going to chain one, turn, ignore that chain one and work immediately into the stitch where you just chained from, popping in a half double crochet. Now, if you want to mark that stitch, you absolutely can. It's great to keep track of your stitches. It means that you don't have to count. Oops, it would help if I could actually put it in my stitch. Oh my gosh, the struggle is real. 
All right, by marking that very first stitch of the row, it means that you almost don't need to count. So we're just going to go ahead and work a half double crochet into every stitch all the way along, not forgetting the stitch here that you marked on the row below. So this is the start of row two and the end of row three. So really easy, half double crochet into every stitch all the way along. So for the remainder of the body of the blanket, keep repeating this exact same row until your blanket is the length that you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and crochet up a few more rows and then I will show you how to finish off the main body of your blanket. So once your blanket is the size that you want it to be and you have completed your final stitch of the very last row, to finish off, we're going to chain one, cut your yarn, leaving a nice long length for weaving in, pull that up, pull it tight, and the main body of your blanket is complete. Now for adding a border, I'm going to show you how to crochet the first two rounds in single crochet stitches, which will give you the perfect base for going on to add any border that you so wish afterwards. So using the same color yarn that you have made the body of your blanket in, we're going to start by working into the very first stitch of the last row, so the top right hand corner of your blanket. Now I'm going to begin with a standing single crochet stitch. You can, of course, attach your yarn however you like and pop one single crochet into that stitch. But for me, I'm going to pop a slip knot onto my hook and then into that stitch, I'm just going to work a single crochet. So I put my finger on that loop, go under the Vs of the stitch, draw up a loop. I've got two loops on my hook and then yarn over and pull through those loops and I have made a single crochet. Now mark that stitch with your stitch marker. I'm having a lot of trouble with my stitch markers today. I'm all fingers and thumbs, so apologies for that. Then work one single crochet into the top of all your stitches along this row. Then when you have reached your final stitch and you've worked a single crochet, chain one and work a single crochet back into the top of that exact same stitch. This will form your corner. I'll grab a stitch marker and pop it into that chain one. As you can see, it's a very tiny, tiny, tiny little space in there. Pop a stitch marker in there so you can easily identify it when you come back around. Oh, these stitch markers. They're driving me insane. Now rotate your work and we're going to be working down one of the raw sides. So you've worked into the top of all your stitches. Now we're going to work one single crochet evenly down the side of your work. Now I find the best way is one single crochet 
for each row of your half double crochets. So I'm going to identify this here and work one single crochet. Then move down. You can see the top of the stitch. I'm not working to there. I'm working around that last stitch of the next row down. Ignore the top of the stitch and again into this hole on the side. Now, as you work down, pay close attention. If you find your work is pulling in too tight, that means you haven't got enough stitches. So feel free to pop in an additional single crochet evenly along the row to bring it out flat. If you find it's ruffling up and the edges are wavy, that means you have too many stitches. So feel free to just eliminate the odd single crochet here and there. What you want is for it to lie flat. I, for me, find that one single crochet in the end of each row is ideal for my tension. But feel free to play around with it and see what suits yours. So you can see mine is lying nice and flat. So that's what we want. And I've now reached the bottom. And this is the base of all my foundation stitches from the very first row. So into that very first stitch here, I'm going to work one single crochet. It's right by the slip knot for me. It might not be for you, depending on how many rows you've done. And then chain one and work a single crochet back into that exact same stitch. And then grab your stitch marker and pop it into that chain one space, just so you don't lose it. And then work one single crochet along the bottom of your row, just like we did on the top. And if you worked with foundation stitches, it'd be really nice and easy to work into the base of them. Might be a bit trickier if you started with a traditional chain, but just persevere. One single crochet for each stitch. So I've worked my way across the bottom. I've worked one single crochet into that last stitch and we're forming a corner. So chain one and single crochet back into that exact same stitch. And yep, you're one step ahead of me. Grab a stitch marker and pop it into that chain one space. And then just as you did down the last raw side, we're going to do exactly the same thing one single crochet in the end of each row, working evenly back up the remaining side. Once you have reached the top, you're back to your very first stitch. Now into the same place as that very first single crochet you made, make one single crochet, chain one, slip stitch to that first single crochet. Now again, Mark that chain one space behind it. And you should have a nice lying flat. It's not ruffling. It's not pulling in. 
just nicely lying flat without too much effort. Round of single crochets with four corners marked. Now for row two, you're going to do exactly the same thing. So you're going to chain one and single crochet into that exact same spot. And then mark that stitch. It's very, very easy to lose these little single crochets, especially when working with the same colored yarn. And this round is vastly easier single crochet in every single crochet stitch until you get to your stitch marker. Once you reach that chain one space that you marked in the last round, into that chain one space, we're going to work a new corner, which is one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet, all into that same chain one space. And then pop that stitch marker straight back into the new chain one space that you just formed. Now we're going to do this all the way around one single crochet in every single crochet stitch that you made and when you get to your chain one spaces into the chain one space you're going to form a new corner of single crochet chain one single crochet then mark the new chain one space work that all the way around Once you have gone all the way around, we're going to slip stitch to join to that very first single crochet of the round. Now we're done with this turquoise colour, so I'm going to chain one, cut my yarn leaving a nice long tail for weaving in, pull it up, pull it tight, and the first two rounds of your border are complete. Just pull it into shape a little bit for you here. Now if you want to leave it at that you can. If you want to go ahead and add any border to this you absolutely can. For my personal blanket I changed to white and into this top corner, top right hand again. I joined with a standing single crochet right into that chain one space. I then simply repeated exactly what we did in the last row and I went all the way around making single crochets in every stitch and in the corners I created new corners with one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. To finish this third round, we started with one single crochet in the chain one space. We need to just finish off this corner, so into that same spot, work one single crochet, chain one, and then slip stitch to that single crochet stitch. And of course, mark that corner. OK, 
Okay, so for the scallop shell row, now depending on your stitch count, you may need to fudge it and fake it till we make it. Now that's absolutely fine. I can already tell that I am not going to be able to properly follow the sequence to get the perfect falling. I'm gonna have to fudge it. I'm gonna have to fudge it at these corners. Now, if you also have to fudge it, that's fine. That is totally fine. Here's a little tip for if your stitch count doesn't quite work, like my small sample won't work. Whatever you do on this top row with your little five double crochet shells that we're going to be making, just make sure you have the same number on the top as you do on the bottom. So if you end up having to skip more than one stitch to make the pattern work on the top, make sure that you mentally note that you did that and you repeat the same thing along the bottom. The same applies for the sides. On the straight sides, we are going to have one single crochet, skip a stitch, five double crochets. Skip a stitch, single crochet, skip a stitch, five double crochets. That's the sequence and it will start off fine. <laughs> But you'll see very quickly when I get over here, I'm going to have to do a bit of fudging. But that is absolutely fine because ultimately in the grand scheme of your blanket, no one is going to notice if you skipped two stitches instead of one. No one is going to notice if you accidentally have one scallop too many on the side compared to the other. No one's going to see. No one is going to see. It's fine. So just relax and we'll do a bit of fudging and, you know, that's the joy of crochet, right? If you hate it, you can always undo it and do something else. All right. My massive disclaimer about how we're basically going to just wing it. <laughs> to begin, we're going to chain one and single crochet into the next stitch. Then skip a stitch and work five double crochets into the next. One, two, oops, three, four, five. Then skip a stitch and single crochet in the next. This is the sequence you're going to follow all the way on your sides. So we have our single crochet, skip a stitch, five double crochet in the next. skip a stitch, single crochet. And again, skip a stitch, five double crochet in the next. Skip a stitch, single crochet. So as you work your way along, you'll get these lovely little cute scallops. And then as you approach your corner, you may need to do a little bit of maths just for the fudging. <laughs> so I can see I haven't got enough stitches here to complete the sequence. So if I skip one, five double crochet in the next, skip one, I'll be putting a single crochet right in to here, right into this very last stitch. And that's gonna get a bit tight before my corner. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to work my, skip a stitch, my five double crochets as normal. And then I'm going to put a single crochet in the next stitch, right? I'm not going to skip one right in that very next stitch. I'm just going to do it. I'm fudging it. 
barely notice, right? So we're absolutely fine. So I've got one, two, three, four scallops across the top. And all I need to remember is on the very first one, when I come to do the bottom, is I didn't skip a stitch. So when I come and I'm working along the bottom, I know to do a single crochet because I've still got one left. So I've got one stitch here, which I'm going to skip before the corner. So I know that when I'm doing the bottom, skip a stitch and then just immediately work a single crochet and then my five doubles right next to it. So I'm going to copy exactly what I did in these three stitches up here, down the bottom down here. So just make a mental note. And that is all I mean by fudging it. <laughs> then into your chain one corner space, we're going to work seven double crochet stitches. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. <laughs> six. We'll get a bit tight. And seven. Now if I take my hook out and lie it out, you'll see that was enough to bring us around the corner. It will also be already covering one of your stitches. As you come around, you'll notice one of your single crochets in here is sort of already being covered. So we've got one that's completely covered. Don't worry about that one. We're just going to go ahead and skip the first visible one that we can see. So as you've come around the corner, you cover up one of these stitches. Don't worry, just skip the next visible one and secure it down with a single crochet. See, now, can you really notice where I fudged it a little bit? No. Yes, because I pointed it out and it's a tiny sample on a massive blanket. No. <laughs> so we're going to work this all the way around your blanket. Five double crochet side scallops, these little shells, and seven double crochets as you come around the corner. So repeat your side shells, which is you have single crocheted, skip one, five double crochets, skip one, secure it down with a single crochet. Repeat this all the way around, five double crochet shells on the side, seven for the corners. All right, that is my final stitch. Just make sure you have the same amount of side shells as you do, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four on the top and bottom and down the sides. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, we're good. To finish, we're going to slip stitch to that very first single crochet. Chain one, cut your yarn. Pull that up through and out. Then grab your large eye needle. We're going to go ahead that yarn tail to the back and go ahead and weave in all your ends. So once all your ends are woven in on the back, you're now ready to begin sewing on your daisies. Now it's totally up to you whether you make your daisies before your blanket. I made mine after, so I made one and then I sort of eyeballed how many I'd need for the entire blanket. Now for the sewing of your daisies, use the same colour yarn 
that you made the body of your blanket out of. Just for high contrast, I'm going to use a completely separate color so you can see what I'm doing. But please, please, please use the same color as your main blanket. The reason why it's so important, this is my actual big main blanket here, to use the same color is so that you do not see your stitches either when lifting the little daisies or on the back of the work. All you'll see is a small little divot from where it's sewn on, but you can't see the stitches themselves. So it is vital that you use the same yarn that you crocheted the body of the blanket with. But for this, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a nice contrasting color. So thread up your needle. Decide where you want your daisy to go. I'm just gonna go for in the middle and I'm going to sew from the back through to the front. Now where I'm going to be sewing is on these little tiny gaps in between the half double crochet stitches of the flower. So I've got half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, chain one. Those little chain spaces are where I'm going to be sewing. So I want to try and bring my needle from the back through and up in between these little bars of the flower. It's about there-ish. Oh, look at that, first try, first try. I'm going to bring this through and leave a tail, obviously at the back of your work. Now go back down over the bar of the stitch and into the next chain space. Now what I like to do at this point is just knot this tail end around your working yarn. Little double knot because we're going to be pulling these stitches nice and tight because you want it to be super duper tight and on there. I'm moving my middle of my daisy around quite a lot. I'm being quite rough for this demonstration, but you be a little bit more gentle when doing your sewing. Now I'm going to bring my needle up into the next space along. So moving across to the next bar, bring my needle up from here. Make sure I'm not catching the tail. Yeah, the tail's safely out of the way. And then I'm going to go back, working backwards over that stitch here. So I'm just going from right to left. And pull it down nice and tight. Then again, come up into the next chain space on the right hand side of the next stitch. So here, and go back to cross the bar of that stitch. And pull it tight. So we're going to keep doing this all the way around come up and go back down, come up and then go back down, working right to left to cross back over the posts of the stitches. Pull it nice and tight as you go. See, so this is how it looks at the back. And this is why it's so important to use the same colored yarn. So keep going, come up to the right of the post. Try not to drop your needle. Let's try that one again, shall we? Come up to the right of the post and go back down, crossing backwards into the left. Do that all the way around your flower. Pulling it nice and tight as you go.
So I've gone all the way around securing every little post all the way around. I've didn't, almost destroyed this poor little thing here. Here you can see there is a stitch in there. It's just covered. I think that's where I slip stitch to end that one. But you want to give your daisy like a little bit of TLC <laughs> so it sits back in again. And then flip it over. You should be back to your original tail here. Tie a knot. Again, keeping it nice and tight. This is I've done this all very nice and tight. Third knot for luck. Your daisy is nicely secured to your blanket at every point. It's not coming off. And then, of course, you would weave in your ends on the back here, which is going to look horrendous <laughs> with me using this sort of orangey yarn. But this is the sort of thing you want to do with your tails. And you just want to weave them in. Keep going. Repeat the process until you have absolutely covered your blanket in fun little daisies. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please do let me know down in the comments what you think about this fun daisy blanket. And until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.